Welcome to the often imitated but never duplicated Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and in this video we're talking about throttle assemblies. Clearly, they all basically do the exact same thing, but there are a handful of details and differences that you may not be aware of, and also we wanted to give you guys some tips on choosing the exact one for your project. Now, if you can take a break from watching whiskey throttle videos and watch this throttle video, stick around, this one's gonna be good. Right, so throttles, that, uh, that twisty bit on the right hand side of the, of the handlebars, uh, most riders find that extremely entertaining and I know that I certainly do. So how does it work? You probably haven't thought about it. Why does it matter? Eh, because it decides how much power the engine's gonna produce at any given moment. Now, the only people that really think about the details of their throttles maybe are racers who are really concerned about the throttle feel and the throttle delivery, and custom builders who are really trying to figure out how to finesse that, that fine line between the visual appeal of the device and the physical function um, and how it's gonna integrate with the engine. And that's kind of where we live, is in that nexus of finding something that looks good in the application and also works really well on the bike. Now, these days, it's the twist grip. That's how a throttle works. But it wasn't always that way. Uh, the dawn of motorcycling, the early pioneering days, the very turn of the century in the early 1900s, you'd find all sorts of different throttle uh, mechanisms. And most of them were horrible, just absolutely awful. Uh, some type of dual lever thing that you'd find on like a wick carburetor sort of bicycle motorcycle thing from the uh, 1903. Um, and even up to 1920, you still were dealing with sort of double lever, weird sort of awful, not able to modulate throttles. But it wasn't until uh, 1904 that Indian actually released the very first production twist grip and that became the standard operating procedure. It's strange that it did take 30 years for the idea to catch on because the original inception of the twist grip throttle was created by Sylvester Roper in 19, or sorry, 1867 and it took amazingly over 30 years for us to figure out that levers and sticky things weren't the best way to do this. So fortunately we don't have to deal with that and we get to deal with all of this. What does it mean? We've basically got three different categories of throttles that we use these days. Uh, we've got a single pull, which is the most basic and elemental, and also where you'll find the most variety of option. Uh, we've got a push pull, which is um, the most kind of safe and OEM and kind of correct. And we've also got a dual pull, which is kind of a uh, an esoteric way to manage a twin cylinder motorcycle without having to have a cable splitter. All right, so let's start with the single pull throttles. Um, they're kind of hanging out over here and we'll start with the standard. And this is about as standard as you could possibly get. We've got a grip, we've got a housing, and we've got a single cable exit. And so this has one cable goes in, to this, pulls a carb, bike goes, cool. Um, after that, we get into what I consider a 90 degree um, throttle, and that means that basically the cable exits 90 degrees to the rotation of the barrel or to the, um, to the handlebar. And there's a bunch of different versions of these. Um, we can get into some of those details when, when we're a little further into this, but just realize there's this version. And then the last and the most interesting to me at least of the single pull throttles is um, an internal throttle. Now, you see that this has got a bunch of parts and pieces and that's really the only way to demonstrate how it works. This would be welded into a handlebar and then this little part slides, that's what creates the throttle action and this goes over the top of it. And now why this appeals is because visually you don't have all this bulk. Visually, all you've got is handlebar, grip, done. You don't have any of this extra crap and it just makes for a really clean, super tidy look on a custom bike. Performance, not that great. Um, and that kind of leads into a fundamental issue with the single pull throttle. And that is, if for any reason your carburetor sticks, your cable sticks, something happens, bad things happen, um, there's no way to make the throttle shut. And that's kind of why generally, industry standard, we've all moved towards a push-pull setup. This is basically a single pull throttle that has added a secondary cable that for the most part does absolutely nothing. In most conditions, 
uh, the carb spring is going to return the throttle and everything's fine and normal. It works exactly the same as this, but in the condition that um, the carburetor binds, the cable binds, something happens, you have a force return cable called a push cable, although you can't push a cable. This is still a pull cable, and that means when you roll the grip forward, it forces the carburetor shut. Um, it's kind of a safety thing, and that's why this has become virtually industry standard. Now, on the bench, we've got two different versions that are shown. Uh, this one is kind of the standard, it's a straight exit, no big deal. Uh, this one is also a straight exit, but it's got some 90 degree uh, fittings on it, or I don't know, what, 70, 80, something, some other degree fittings on it that helps to reroute the cables back into the bars. Um, and that brings us to the last kind of uh, unusual type of throttle that we, that we come into, and that's the uh, dual pull or twin pull. And this has two cable exits. They both do the exact same thing. This is basically a double version of a single pull. And that might not seem that great, but it's awfully handy and it works really well if you're dealing with a twin cylinder engine uh, like you'd find on a Moto Guzzi or a BMW. It allows you to control both carburetors with a single throttle and not have to have a cable splitter. All right, so let's take a little bit more detailed look at some of the features that these throttles have. Um, the first thing to talk about is kind of the visual impact that the throttle sort of represents in the build. And you've got some that are really minimalist, and I think of the options on the bench right now, I think this is the most minimalist uh, throttle that we have. And you can also move up to kind of like the bulky and bigger sort of larger visual impact throttles like this uh, right angle domino and this twin pull domino. That really comes down to your personal preference and what makes sense on your build. Um, a super sleek chopper, you might want to go with something minimal, and if you really want to get ultra minimal, you're dealing with an internal throttle. These work great, they are a little bit fussy, the installation's a little bit more involved, but man, if you want to go to maximum visual minimalism, that's your guy right there. Now, the next thing up is kind of uh, a consideration of the build quality. Now, fundamentally, if it's on RevivalCycles.com, that means that it is of good quality. It doesn't mean it's like necessarily like crazy, super expensive, like unbelievable. It just means that this is quality stuff. This is stuff that meets our value proposition. And everything we've got on the bench has been selected because it meets that. There's a bunch of other stuff that we've seen out in the market that just doesn't, doesn't cut the mustard. And we don't want to offer that to you. So don't worry. If you're getting it from us, it's the build quality is there. Tolerances are there. The finishes are there. It's worth having. Now, some of the other little details that you, that you might, be, um, might be new to you are like on this Domino, or sorry, on this Daytona by Domino, uh, you've got a throttle stop, and that means you can actually set where the throttle stop is so that you're not stressing and stretching your cables or compressing your housings or doing some weird stuff like that. And it also has a throttle uh, lock. This is kind of like a cruise control, a very, very crude cruise control. And in general, I would consider it a bad idea um, but basically, you run that in and it adds some drag and it basically makes your throttle stick so that it will stay in position and you can maintain um, highway speeds. Same thing on uh, this custom tech. You've also got the drag knob. Others have built-in adjusters so you can very quickly and easily make some throttle cable adjustments so you can adjust the free play. And a lot of riders find that that free play is really important to getting the right feel um, of the bike and making sure that you are delivering the correct amount of power at every given moment. Other stuff that's important to look for is, you know, these little rubber boots and stuff helps keep water out of the cables, also just dresses up and cleans up the transition from the adjuster into the cable. Little things like that, you know, the Daytona comes with um, that little adjuster boot. Uh, this throttle also has built-in adjusters. And like this throttle, although this is basically a uh, straight exit, this one has some adapters that allow you to reroute the cables 90 degrees away. And it also includes an adjuster so that you can keep your, your cable tension and that, that free play exactly correct for your riding preference. So one of the most interesting um, technological developments in the land of throttles is something that we call a variable cam wheel. And this allows you to kind of fine tune the throttle response for your bike. It's almost like having that 
um, ride by wire or fly by wire EFI kind of different rider modes. You know, if you get like a super modern sport bike, you can s select um, like rain mode or race mode or street mode. And this is sort of the same thing, but it is applicable to very ordinary analog motorcycles. So what, what's going on in here, just quick pop this apart, um, <clears throat> is really pretty simple. There's just a different diameter on the cam wheels and that causes the cables to get pulled at a different rate. And you can actually go through and change this stuff out relatively quickly. It's kind of a two bolt operation to open up this housing. Never been very good using a screwdriver in my left hand. I'm not sure why I'm doing it now. All right. So you've got these different cam wheels that you can just pop that off and pop that on. And voila, you have a completely different throttle response for your bike. Um, realistically, this isn't something that you would want to fool with if it's just raining on a happen, you know, on a Tuesday and you're gonna ride to work. Uh, but if you were kind of looking to find the right feel that you appreciate, this is a great way to do it. Right, so these cam wheels actually lead us into this whole concept of kind of the pull ratio. And that, that equates to how many millimeters of pull do you get per degree of throttle rotation. And you talk about um, quarter turn throttles and people love to talk about quick throttles and stuff like that. Well, that's really kind of coming down to what the cam profile is. You can have variable cam profiles like you would get with an MX2 or some of the other really high-end throttles. But for the most part, everybody's dealing with linear um, pull ratios. So something like this, you can see the diameter of that is much larger than this. And that means that this is gonna pull more millimeters, more inches per degree of twist. Meaning if you've got a 30 millimeter carb, it's only gonna take a few degrees to get that open. Or if you've got a 42, it's gonna take a few more. But bottom line is, the bigger the diameter, the faster the throttle is going to react, the faster the throttle response is going to react. But that pull ratio is really only one part of the equation. The rate that the throttle pulls determines kind of how sensitive it is. The total stroke length determines how much the throttle is actually able to open. And that kind of is important if you've got straight pull carbs. If you've got a 42 millimeter straight pull carb, you need to wrap up 42 millimeters worth of throttle cable around that pulley, around that housing, and that is where something like this comes in. If you were to try and wrap up 42 millimeters on this, you're gonna have better than 180 degrees. You're gonna have to sit there and kind of regrip and regrip and regrip. And that's what people are talking about when they talk about quarter turn throttles or fast turn throttles or drag racing throttles or racing throttles in general. That's about that kind of ratio and total stroke length. So any competent retailer is gonna be providing those specifications for you. Um, on our site, we've got all the details about stroke length, pull ratio, all that sort of stuff is included, and then a little bit of information about mounting. So one of the last things that you might wanna consider is if you're dealing with a uh, 90 degree throttle exit is some of them have kind of friction reducing pulleys and those are great, they really do improve the feel, they reduce the amount of friction because every time a cable goes through a tight bend, there's some drag that's introduced. And by adding a pulley, it has a very low drag and that means you get just a little bit better throttle feel and a little bit faster kind of throttle response. But <clears throat> so far we haven't really found um, a throttle that meets our standards because so many of those become very, very bulky and very, very mechanical and just sort of um, unruly and they end up dominating the entire control arrangement on the handlebars and so that didn't really suit our needs and the the trade-off the difference the kind of the sensitivity isn't really there now if you're building an all-out race bike and fractions of fractions of seconds are important to you yeah go for that but if you're building a bike that you're gonna ride on the street you're gonna ride on the weekend you're just gonna have fun with any of the stuff out here good to go now, I suppose it's worth mentioning that we do spend a fair amount of time looking around trying to find the, the best offerings that exist for throttles and pretty much any product that we have on our site. 
Now, we haven't found a whole lot that's interesting, um, and as we do, we'll continue to add it. So if you wanna check out what we've got to offer for throttles and what we found to be the best throttles on the market, check out revivalcycles.com. It's right there in the link in the description. And if you're a, mm, I don't know, if you're looking to build a custom and you really wanna have the highest quality, the best sort of fit finish, et cetera, it really is the custom tech right now. Um, this has the right finishes. There's a handful of different options. And ultimately this is the smallest package, kind of the least intrusive and the, the most elegant. Now, if you wanna just stick with some basic stuff, um, this rally throttle from Domino is a great way to go. It's worth noting that all of our throttles are metal housings um, because plastic deteriorates over time, UV, et cetera, et cetera. And we're just a lot more comfortable using a metal housing for the throttle. So of course, these are all the throttles that we use on our builds and we've kind of resolved to this, this little collection of, uh, of options based on what works for us. And when we go with just like straight up basic, like it doesn't, it's, it's um, we just need to get the job done and it's super simple. It's these two guys. These are the Rally um, and the Chrome Rally uh, from Domino. Those are great. If we're going with a little bit dressier stuff or maybe into the kind of the chopper realm, looking at custom tech, uh, modern sport bike stuff, uh, or even cafe racers, the Domino MX2 is great. Um, if you want to maintain that sort of safety and, and that's important to you, this guy with the double exit, uh, the push-pull arrangement and the 90 degrees is a great way to go. Uh, when we get into the more vintage stuff, uh, BMW Airheads and Moto Guzzi's, man, this, this Daytona, that's what they were originally fitted with. It still works great. You can buy them brand new and they are every bit as good as they ever were. And then if you want a little bit faster, more aggressive throttle response, um, this twin pull from Domino is also great for that. All right, and there you have it. Way more information than you ever wanted to know about throttles, but just to recap, we've got single pull. These are the basics. These are the ones that just have one cable. It makes the thing happen. Uh, there's a few different variations of those, but really it's a 90 degree straight pull and then the internal. We're gonna do a um, install video on how to install an internal throttle, but stay tuned for that. Then you get to super safe. This is what um, the nanny state requires and all the regulations, blah, 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 means that you've got a open cable and a shut cable. That means that you can always positively close your throttle, which is actually kind of important, but we all ride motorcycles. We're accustomed to danger. And then if you've got a twin cylinder bike where the throttle or the, the carburetors, throttle bodies are on opposite sides of the world and there isn't a link between the two, that's where the twin pull, dual pull cables come in and we've got a couple of options for those. All right, so this is the class of 2018 for Revival Cycles throttles and you can find the link to these in the description. Um, we'll add more as we find them, but like everything else, we actually use these products on the builds that we do, and that means that we won't offer something that doesn't meet our standards. So if it doesn't cut it, it's not on the site. If you're looking for a new throttle, go check that place out first. While you're there, there's a ton of other amazing stuff, and that follows the same criteria. If it's not good, we don't list it. So if it's on the site, it's worth having. Um, hopefully you found some of this information interesting or useful and this might even be something that you needed to know in order to get your motorcycle back on the road. And at Revival Cycles, that's really what we're here to do. We want you to get your project finished and back on the road because at the end of the day, building's fun, but riding is just a little bit better.